This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So one of the tricky areas to deal with regarding shares is where there's a takeover or a reorganization of the company's shares. Now, if it is a simple share for share exchange, it's known as a paper for paper transaction there's no capital gains tax because basically you had blue shares and you sold them or there was a takeover and you ended up with red shares okay all you've got is two pieces of paper they were blue now they're red and the red ones are now the equivalent of the blue ones with costs as well so it's a share for share paper for paper transaction not capital gains tax as no cash was received. The new shares are deemed to have been acquired at the same cost as the original shares. So whatever you paid for the blue ones, that's how much the red ones are worth. However, so that's the bit, that's the easy bit. However, what happens if it's mixed consideration? In other words, you had ordinary shares and now you've got ordinary and preference shares. Um, you need to be able to um, put the cost of your original shares. So you had blue shares, they cost you £5,000. Now you've got red and green shares. Now these red and green shares are worth £5,000. That's what you paid for the blue ones. But these red and green shares, you need to split that 5000 between them. So how do we do that? So that's one of the things that we um, we need to do. Now, fairly straightforward in some aspects. It says there, if you acquired 300,000 ordinary shares and 100,000 ordinary preference shares in the takeover, normally three quarters, one quarter. Now, there is a sequence of events that I want to take you through um, to bring you to a point where you can um, apply these steps um, to any takeover question uh, that you might have. Steps, let me find that. There we go. So the steps. Step number one. What did you have? Okay. So say, for example, I had 4,000 blue shares and they cost me £12,000. Step two. And these are the questions you need to ask yourself. What did I get in the takeover? So maybe you got two ordinary shares and one preference share for each ordinary share. The question will tell you quite clearly what you've got. So this cost now needs to be allocated between these various shares according to the instructions um, that we have. So we're going to have a look at this example and put these steps into place. So Mark in 2016 bought 4,000 shares in silver for £12,000. In June 2020, so that's the original shares and that is your cost. In June 2020, silver was overtaken by gold and Mark received two ordinary shares and one preference share in gold for each ordinary share held. This is really important that you read the question carefully and then you obviously follow through with those steps. So that's what he had, that's step one. And this is step two, what did he get? Now, this is how we value that immediately after the takeover the gold shares were valued at five pounds each for the ordinary ones and two pounds each 
for the uh, preference shares. OK, so that's the next step is to allocate the cost. Because we're going to need the cost because he sold all the ordinary shares. So that's our proceeds in our computation. We've got to work out the capital gain on the sale of those shares. So let's go back to where we were before. OK, so we know what we had. OK, we had 4000 silver shares which cost us that, and we've had two ordinary and one preference shares. So what did he receive? OK, if he got 4,000, the ordinary shares, he's now got 8,000 of those because he got two for every one that he had before. And the question says they were valued at £5 each. So the total value of these shares is £40,000. He also received some preference shares. 4,000 of those, one for every one, and they were valued at £2 each. So on the date of the takeover, that's the market value of all those shares, the silver, uh, the gold shares. Now, we need to allocate the cost between those two shares because he sold some of them and we need to know what the cost is to put it into our computation. This never alters. That is the cost. That's how much he paid for his original shares. Now he's got these shares they cost exactly the same amount of money, but we need to divide the cost between the two of them. And we use the value in order to be able to do that. OK, so it would be 8000 divided by 48 times 12 would go in there. And then 40,000 divided by 48 multiplied by that goes in there. So let's see what the model answer looks like so that you can see how this has worked. So these are the workings. Mark received ordinary and preference shares. OK, and the 12,000 needs to be divided according to the market value. So this we've done already. That was on, is it that one? No, that one. There you go. We've done this already. 48,000. So the cost of the ordinary shares is 12,000 divided by uh, divided by 48 multiplied by 40 is 10. Which means the cost of the preference shares would be 2. So having done that, this cost here can now go into our computation. Always with these, when you do them, will you please write out all those kind of steps that you've been through? What did he have? What did he get? And then work out the market value and then allocate the cost accordingly. So that's the, that's the kind of um, thing that we need to be showing to the examiner exactly what's going on. OK, so now we've learned a set of rules. OK, you've learned those rules. You know the steps. I'm now going to throw a spanner in the works because sometimes if cash is received, then a gain arises. All of these that we've looked at so far have been paper for paper. We had paper, silver. Now, ordinary shares. Now we've got gold, ordinary and preferred, but we've only had paper for paper, no capital gains. All we've done is allocate the cost for future capital gains. But if you have cash, and that sometimes arises, then you need to work out the cash element because 
there's going to be a capital gains um, computation that needs to be dealt with. So using example number four, what difference would it make if Mark received two ordinary valued at five pounds and instead of having preference, he had two pounds in cash for every share that he owned. OK, what is the gain arising at the time of the takeover? Now, this one said, what is the gain arising on the disposal? There was no gain arising on the takeover. It's the disposal that he did in July 22 that we worked it out for. So this is a, see the wording is different. The gain on the rising on the disposal because he sold some of the shares and we needed to know what the cost is. This is the gain arising at the time of the takeover. And that's the hint. That's a big hint. There is some cash involved. Okay, so let's have a look at the capital gains computation for this situation. Now, have you noticed with these sometimes they work out the computation at the end? This one's got the computation at the end. That one, the computation had been laid out at the beginning and then the workings underneath. It doesn't matter which order you do them in as long as you show clearly that's my answer and that's my workings. It doesn't matter whether the answers go first and then the workings or in this one, the workings go first and then the answer. So what did he get? So what did he have? What did he get? He got ordinary shares and cash. OK, he got two pounds. For every share. And he, he had 4,000 shares, which means he got £8,000 in cash. This is the original cost, which now has to be allocated between the shares and the cash. Because this cash that he's received here is now chargeable to tax. And there is a cost of 2000 So the gain, and that would then need to be added in with the rest of the gains, less the current year losses, less the annual exemption, less the brought forward losses taxed at either 10 and 18 if it's basic, 20 and 28 if it is um, a high rate taxpayer. And at the end of the chapter, questions 27 and 28, what I would suggest you do, this isn't the easiest chapter. What I would suggest that you do is you pause the recording, watch it again, go through the examples before you do the practice questions.